Welcome to Books and Boots, a bookish and wine and juice podcast. Whether you're a fan of books, wine, or true crime, this is the place for you. Pour yourself a glass of whatever you enjoy and enjoy the show. Cheers! Hi everyone, it's Jade. It's been a while. Welcome back to the show. I'm so sorry I've been absent. I have been so busy overseas in Indonesia. It was absolutely beautiful. But as as wonderful as all the travels have been, I'm so excited to be back home where wine is way cheaper. Seriously, like, the prices of wine were gut-wrenching. So today, I have a glass of Pinotage, which is not usually my favourite type of wine. I'm a Shiraz lover. But there's a special on in the liquor store at the moment for a one litre beautiful big bottle of wine. And it is a 2018 Pinotage called Capupino Sinotage. This is a fine wine from South Africa, produced by Bolan Zella. I had some with my partner the other evening while we were setting up the Christmas tree with some Christmas carols, and even he was like, wow, he thinks this is his new favourite wine, and I could not agree more. It is beautiful. You know how people say when they have wine they can taste coffee or lemongrass or dark chocolate or something? Often I taste wine and I don't really pick up those flavours really. Like, it tastes delicious, but how specific can you really be? But this specific wine, really, you can taste the coffee. It is wonderful. On the back of the bottle, it says, The Bollenzella Coffee Style Pinotage delivers layers of dark prune and plum flavours with a prominent cedar and French oak finish that is reminiscent of Mocha Java Crema. Due to the beautiful extraction of Pinotage fruit flavours and well-integrated oak, the wine delivers a creamy, lingering finish. Enjoy with red meat dishes and chocolate. I can definitely vouch for this wine. Absolutely bloody love it. Also, I must say that quite a scary, sad thing is coming this way. This is probably going to be my last episode for a while with booze in it because over January I am finally reading the book The Alcohol Experiment by Annie Grace where it's it's like a 30 day challenge to take back your life and monitor your drinking and see how your life changes and stuff and I'm really looking forward to next year getting into this book adopting a more healthy lifestyle running more often drinking less I, I'll always love my wine don't worry about that but I just feel it's time to take my life back a little bit and be healthy, have more green tea, peppermint tea, uh, stop eating so many salt and vinegar crisps, which is my kryptonite, and just, yeah, tone up, lose a bit of the wobbly parts that I have uh, recently acquired. I've also got a few other books that I'm starting off the year with, which I'll mention just briefly. I've got a book called The 5am Club by Robin Sharma who wrote The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. This book is, on the front it says, Own Your Morning, Elevate Your Life. I just feel like I need to go into 2020 with a really different mindset. It's my last year in my 20s. It's a big one because I need to start moulding and chiselling my life into how I want it to be now. I need to make the right decisions and create the life that I know I deserve and that I know that I can have so I need to be more positive and grab life by the balls. Another book that I'm really excited to read is Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness who is one of the hosts of Queer Eye for a Straight Guy which is a brilliant show. His book is a memoir. It's a raw journey to self-love and that's something I really need to start practicing in 2020. So I think I'm starting off the year really really good no alcohol, three beautiful books, but for now, it's still 2019, and I have a Christmas prayer for you, so here we go. This podcast has been around for mm, two-ish years now, and one of the traditions thus far has been to bring you Christmas crimes. It's a mixture of funny, entertaining, some really gritty, gory ones that aren't very pleasant, but we're true crime lovers here, or most of us are anyway. So it's a bit of a mix. We'll be right back after this quick break. Oh, that wine's so good. Do you have a true crime obsession like me? Have you ever listened to true crime podcasts and wondered 
why there is no voice for South African victims. Well, that voice is here. True Crime South Africa covers solved and unsolved South African true crime cases. Each episode is a deep dive, not only into the mechanics of the case, but more importantly, into the victim's story and who they were as human beings. True Crime South Africa is available on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Our content is waiting to be discovered by you. Today's episode, I I was going to record an episode with my friend Jess, but unfortunately it's already the 22nd of December and Christmas is around the corner. Things are so busy in our little town. She's working a full-time job overseas and so she's crazy busy too. So unfortunately, you're just getting me today with one Christmas crime that I hope you will... It's hard to say enjoy a Christmas crime, isn't it? Or any kind of crime, but... I hope you enjoyed this episode, and at the end of it, there's a really important message that I want to bring to everyone. So, pour yourself a glass of wine and enjoy this show. On Christmas Eve 2014, Preston Pollard, a 23-year-old Air Force trainee from Venus, Texas, was being consoled by friends who were worried that the young man was going to commit suicide. He'd originally bought his 18-year-old girlfriend, Rosa Quarter, in Florida a flight to visit him over the festive season, but unfortunately she wasn't able to go. This seemed to tip Pollard over the edge. Their three-year relationship had been incredibly rocky, and he wasn't handling the rejection well at all. Rosa had moved to Florida with her family some time before, and initially Pollard had joined them. He'd been so invested in his relationship that he gave up his entire life in Texas, his job as a prison guard, his car, and picked up work in Walmart to help her family get by. During their time in Florida, the young couple split up, and Pollard returned to Texas, where he started focusing on a career in the military. A little while later, Rosa contacted Pollard, apologizing for breaking up with him and asking him to come back. It was a young, unstable relationship. Neither Pollard or Rosa really knew what they wanted in life. Back to Christmas Eve of 2014. Pollard left his friends in higher spirits some hours later after a suicidal breakdown. He spoke of the upcoming New Year's party plans. His friends decided not to contact professionals about his mental state because they thought they'd been able to talk him out of doing something stupid. He'd also fretted that doctors would want to put him on antidepressants and that would destroy his future in the Air Force. He got behind the wheel of his 2002 Blue Honda and started to make the 15-hour drive 1,100 miles to visit his girlfriend for Christmas Day in Florida. The Hudson family woke up on Christmas Day having no idea it would be their last one together. Just after midnight on Christmas Day, there was a knock at the door. 55-year-old Mary Lou Hudson Rose's stepmother opened the door. Pollard opened fire on her, then went on to his girlfriend's father, Richard Hudson, 36, who was shot dead. Upstairs, Pollard's girlfriend heard the gunshots and locked her nieces and nephews into a bathroom while she climbed out of a window and ran for help. At 2.30 a.m., Pollard's father, Stephen Pollard, had the police knocking on his door in Texas. They asked him where his son was. Stephen called his son, who answered the phone, telling his father that he would be home in about an hour. That hour slipped by with no sign of Pollard's return. Little did he know that his son was running from the cops, heading west in his car for about 350 miles, but as the cops attempted to pull him over, he shot himself dead. Mary Lou Hudson, was rushed to hospital with critical injuries. She died six weeks later. Pollard's father later gave a statement saying he knew his son and he was not a mean person. He said that it didn't sound likely for the front door to be opened and for his son to just open fire. He was adamant that his son didn't own a gun. To this day, 
Pollard's father has so many questions of his own. Why would his son drive such a long way to murder his girlfriend's family? Some believe he did drive all the way with the sole purpose of committing murder, seeking revenge for not being allowed to spend Christmas with his girlfriend. Or was he just a very depressed young man? Preston Pollard was so worried about being on antidepressants and getting the help that he so clearly needed. I wanted to bring this message onto books and booze, especially around this time of year, where for some people things are tough right now. While others are setting up Christmas trees and away on festive holidays surrounded by loved ones and cheer, there are others out there alone. I really wanted to emphasize the fact today that there is no shame in needing a little bit of extra help sometimes. I know I did. I spoke to a therapist and I was on antidepressants for a while myself. I mean, it took me some time, but I got better. And I must say that, you know, not every day is easy, but I'm so proud of how far I've come and what I've achieved. And I'm excited to see what I'm still going to achieve. So this is just a little message from me to you to let you know that you're not alone. There is nothing wrong with needing help sometimes. I urge you, if you are feeling that way, to reach out to others. People care. I care. Life is so worth living. I don't understand. I don't understand. Everything I did, Everything I did for her. When Reagan Penn discovers that a long-term boyfriend has been cheating on her with over eight women, she packs her bags and leaves the sunny island in Spain that she had called home for over a year. She returns to South Africa, where she is given the chance to start over in life, reassemble herself. Now is the time to be selfish, find a new career, get a home of her own, become whoever she wants to be. But when her best friend, Peyton, is brutally murdered, Reagan is forced to put her life on hold to take responsibility for her friend's 13-year-old daughter, Harley. As the police battle to solve the murder of Peyton and her unborn child, Reagan becomes convinced that her godchild is not the sweet, innocent little girl everyone seems to think that she is. Could Harley have been so consumed by her jealousy and fear of not being the epicenter of her mother's universe that it led to murder? If so, is Reagan safe in her own home? It Was You by Jade Lee Wright, the host of Books and Booze is available to purchase on Amazon in both paperback or Kindle form. Thanks for listening to Books and Booze. You can find us on Instagram under Books Booze Podcast or alternatively boho underscore bookworm. We're also on Twitter under Books Booze Pod. We're also on Patreon if you would like to support us by donating as little as $1 a month. If you're looking for a free way to support us, please leave us a five-star review. As always, it's been a pleasure. Happy reading and drink responsibly.